Hi guys, welcome to the video. Um, today we're going to be looking at sorting algorithms, um, again under the AQA A-Level Computer Science exam board and course. In the top right hand corner you've got the official exam spec referencing both the content and additional information relevant to this particular topic. Um, and we'll be covering all of that today in the video. Let's get going. So the first thing to talk about is just exactly what a sorting algorithm is. Well, it does exactly what it says on the tin. And the idea is that the user provides a list of data that requires some sort of organization. The algorithm then goes through a certain process in order to do that. Um, and the resulting part of this particular algorithm would be a completely sorted list. So there's a logical process that takes place and the values are looked at, compared in some way. And these are done predominantly either using the bubble sort or the merge sort methods. And we should begin by looking at the bubble sort. Um, so the bubble sort is something that is uh, it's an iterative process and each uh, pair of adjacent values are compared and then swapped if they're not currently in any sort of order. The time complexity of this can be regarded as being um, O to the N squared is the way that we describe it um, and that is a nice summary there for you of that. The bubble sort algorithm that I'm going to give you today looks like this. You provide a list of items to the user and then in an iterative way, a nested iterative way actually, um, it continues for however many items there are initially inside of the list. And then the second loop looks at the range of items that exist inside of the list as well, but minus one. Um, and then what happens is you compare whether or not the, the first item you're looking at is bigger than the item that's next to it. And if it is, you essentially swap those over via a temporary variable storage location. Um, and that process is repeated until all of the uh, values inside of the data structure are then in some sort of order, at which point the algorithm ends. The merge sort, um, and again, this is going to reference this use of the term recursion, which we've spoken about already. Uh, it makes use of that as well. And recursion, as we've said before, is essentially a routine that makes some sort of reference to itself, calls itself um, within its own setup. And the merge sort works by dividing the list up into individual data items initially. So it looks at the, the list of data and goes, right, I'm going I'm to scatter this across X amount of separate values. And so it goes ahead and does that. The next thing it does is it then looks at where it can see scope for um, essentially piecing these things back together. And there are predominantly two ways that it does it. The first thing it does is it looks at um, the, the, the values in pairs and then it looks at them in groups of, um, of four and then so on and so forth until it pieces it back together. And for your own reference, the time complexity of a bubble sort can be considered to be n log of n. Uh, and when we look at the big O notation stuff later, that will hopefully become more clear. Here we've got an algorithm for you. Um, there's two parts to this. The first is essentially um, the, the defining of a, a merge sort uh, algorithm, which takes as a parameter the list of items that require sorting. The second part to this is then a merge function, which then looks at the items individually and then pieces them back together based on those parts. So it's incredibly useful with that regard. Um, now, if you look at uh, what we've got here on the, on the left hand side initially, you'll spot that we've got the list of items going in. If we just check that the list of items, first of all, um, is, is not uh, less than or equal to one. If it was, then there wouldn't be any point in doing this. We then look at uh, splitting the list in half if that isn't the case. Um, and we take both essentially what is the top end and the bottom end. And we then assign those values to, um, to two separate variables left and right before um, We've, we've after sorry we've passed them through our merge sort uh, algorithm and what that does is it then carries out this process until you've got a set of separate values the merge algorithm then on the right hand side then deals with this idea of looking at the two values and comparing them and then returning them in whatever way seems fit so it makes sure that things are being returned and pieced back together in the right way um, the best thing the best piece of advice i can give any of you with this sort of algorithm is to give it a go for yourselves and um, flip this into your preferred language and let it run and just have a look at how the values are being pieced back together separated etc along the way um, and, and i'm sure it'll make much more sense as, as you go now as I did with the um, with the searching algorithms, it's always good to do a bit of a comparison between the, the different algorithms you've got an awareness of. And in this case, we're going to be comparing both the, the bubble and the merge sort. Now, the bubble sort is considered to be slow in comparison to the merge sort. Um, it has to complete several passes in order to fully sort the data list. So every time we go through a bubble sort passing of the, of the iteration, if you like, it's only ever have gone. It's only gonna, it's only ever going to have changed um, the position of two values. And so in order to make sure that something is fully sorted, it often has to go through that process several amounts of time. 
um, in comparison to the merge sort, which is faster because the full sort is completed once the process is completed once because of the way it separates things out. On the memory side, bubble is uh, efficient as all data is stored inside of the original list and, and possibly the additional um, temporary storage place that I mentioned earlier as well momentarily whilst things are being swapped around. But the merge sort in this case isn't favourable. Um, because it's working recursively, it has such a heavy dependence on memory um, that, that it makes up a hell of a lot more than it does on the bubble sort side. So in terms of efficiency memory-wise, the merge sort doesn't compare as well. Um, the space complexity consideration, which is something that I referenced to you earlier that I'd like to touch on again, um, is essentially this idea that the amount of resources in terms of memory that an algorithm requires is, is what we consider, it we consider to be space complexity. And the bubble sort requires n memory locations for a list of n items. So for every memory location you've got, you need a, a space to store that. Whereas the merge sort actually requires additional memory to hold the left and right halves of the list. Um, and so actually it ends up needing more than it initially set out to. Uh, and so in terms of what we call the space complexity consideration, again, the merge sort isn't favorable in comparison to the bubble sort, which is only ever gonna need the, the amount of memory required to store the N number of items that it has present within itself.